Tony, your guys had another productive game offensively today. What's been the key of late at that end of the court? I think they're sharing the ball, um, you know, and different guys are doing different things. We have good balance, and, um, you know, we, we made some, some threes. It wasn't like we shot a great percentage, but there was a good um, mix. There was some drives. Uh, there was some threes, some some offensive rebounds, post-ups. Jaden Gardner had a very good offensive game, and uh, the ball was moving, and then we stretched it a little bit. You know, we had the right guys making some threes at the right time. So, uh, and for the most part, took pretty good care of the ball. Um, a little bit, uh, some of the turnovers a little high, um, but I think their ability to share the ball and, and play and um, figure out how they're being guarded and then, you know, react to it, but play with a an ability to score, and then some of the transition buckets helped us too. Tony, how important was what Caden uh, gave you off the bench, particularly in that first half after yeah. Quentin Post started off on fire? They're a different team with Quentin Post. You know, he scored, I don't know if it was 16 or 14, and um, and it was good to see. You know, we, we knew we thought we needed a big body, and again, we used Francisco, we used Caden, and just to match up, Ben, you know, was guarding him some too, and Jaden, but um, he kind of it seemed like he got a little bit of uh, room and rhythm, as the saying goes, for some of the shots. And then um, when we put Caden, I thought he was a little quicker and a little more active to the ball, blocked a couple shots, and, and you know did some good stuff for us um, out there. So I was happy for Caden. And, and you know, that's why we just, just keep staying ready for all those guys. And you know different games present different matchups. And we played with a, a different lineup for, I guess, the majority of the second half. Coach, I think you mentioned that lineup, and, and you talked about Caden defensively. But what does that combo of Caden and Ryan uh, in the defensive back or defensive front court rather do for you guys? Sort of yeah, no, they're both long, and you know, obviously can block shots. It depends if Ryan's at the forward spot and Caden's playing the five spot. But you know that length is uh, is real, and you want them to be, you know, hopefully get on the offensive glass, defensive glass, but use their mobility and length. You know, when you have quickness and length. Um, as long as you're holding your own offensively, uh, that that really can help defensively cover some mistakes or if guys break you down or there's a uh, something that happens. And that's what I've seen from, you know, Caden in the past, certainly, and then today. And Ryan's starting to do that, too, where come and make a play out of nowhere, whether it's, uh, again, an offensive rebound, but defensively a, a, a block shot or s coming back and snagging a rebound. Yeah, Tony, earlier this week we talked a little bit about Ryan and just getting here, but you've had a lot of good athletes here at Virginia. How does he kind of stack up athletically with just what you saw from today? Yeah, I think as he continues to get stronger, you know, so much of it, of it is about your uh, how focused you are, how, how you know, what, what you got, your motor inside accompanied with your athleticism. Are you a second effort, third effort, continuous kind of player? With the length and with the athleticism and that, focused or persistence, that's where it, it gets real. And you can see that. And you know, guys like, shoot, going all the way back uh, from Akeel to Darion to DeAndre to Braxton, um, Justin. Um, yeah, I would have gotten a text the second I got out of here if, if he would have listened. Uh, I, was, I was thinking about Isaiah. Isaiah was, yeah, he was in there. But, but those, those are important. You know, our defense has always been at its best when we've had a, a, an active, mobile, athletic kind of forward four spot that can, whether you need to switch a ball screen or just do something. So he's starting to understand that and um, and embrace that. So that's been good. Tony, is there a recruiting story about Ryan that what sold you on him? Why did you feel like he it was he was a guy you had to have? Yeah, I shared it uh, to John uh, at my radio show. It's a fascinating story, actually. Um, uh, it is. It bears repeating. You know, he um, first of all. Um, you know, the the coach that uh, Steve Donahue, who used to coach at Boston College, ironically told me, he said, you should take a look at this guy. I think he's pretty good. I think he fits what you guys are about. His name was DeAndre Hunter. So I was like, thanks, Coach Donahue. You know, you said you guys got to see it. So we saw DeAndre in the last session, um, and he really played well. I think it was against Miles Bridges. Enough about DeAndre. But anyways, I ran into Coach Donahue, and I said, any other DeAndre Hunters out there? He said, you know, there's a guy, he's not quite like DeAndre, but you should take a look. He's not getting recruited, but I think his upside as he grows into his body could be really good. And that's, he said, Ryan Dunn. And, um, you know, I think the story's pretty well documented. Saw Ryan the very last session. Um, and he played one really good game and struggled, but I think there's potential there. He's willing to 
take his time and do it. And but we actually got a commitment from Isaac Trout and his and I had to call them and tell them. And his father said, called me back like an hour later, said if he would consider coming on a visit and walking on without a scholarship, would you still take him? I was like, hmm, let me think about that. <laughs> um, but. But I said, absolutely. And so he went on a couple more visits, and he came. And I think he just knew what has happened here with guys like him. And what a story. And you know, we had a scholarship anyway, so it all worked out. But his willingness to trust, that's a place that I believe can you know, help me, and it's a, it's a good place. So it's a long story, but it's a pretty amazing story that you don't hear every day. So his willingness, his family's willingness to say, this is the place. I'll make it happen if I have to redshirt, if I have to walk on for a year, as long as, you know, um, I'll come that way. And if one's available, we'll take it. Tony, the, the motor and second and third effort that you referenced, are, are those the keys to offensive rebounding? And I think you had nine points just off four offensive rebounds in the first half. You guys got a lot off the offensive class. Yeah, I mean, you, you have to put your guys in positions where they can go, uh, and there's always floor bounds, but that's, a, that's it's significant. But yes, pursue. You would look, think of all the great offensive rebounders, either we've coached here or you know guys in the NBA that just have that innate ability to anticipate and go to the spot that they think the miss is coming from and keep balls alive and, and then a, a willingness. And that, that stuff matters. And uh, sometimes it's athleticism, sometimes it's not. Jack Salt would keep balls alive. You know, you see that. And he, not that Jack wasn't an elite athlete, but uh, he was a strong athlete. But for sure, that stuff matters uh, regarding offensive and defense and defensive rebounding. Tony, you mentioned that it wasn't a great start for the three-point shooting, but you found so many other ways to score the basketball knowing that three-point shooting isn't always going to be there. Was that encouraging to see that on a night when it's not, it, you've got some other options? Yeah, I think so. You know, their young man didn't play in the second half, and he's a real physical, tough defender, DeMar Langford. And I think that hurt them. They didn't have, you know, the, uh, you know quite he's, – he's rugged, and he was guarding. So I think that hurt us. But you have to find whether, again, offensive rebounds, different drives, post moves, mid-range. Um, you can't live and die by it. So I thought there was a, a decent mix. Yeah, th from game to game, you guys can get scoring from, from different players. Today it was Armand and Jaden. You've gotten it from Kihei. You've gotten it from Reese at uh, different times. When you have so many different guys who can score the basketball, you know, what does it do offensively and, and, and what you guys get from night to night? Yeah, we had four guys in double figures, you know, McNeely as well. And it just it makes a defense, you know, they can't just zero in or key in on one guy. They have to say, all right, if we're going to, you know, shade this way or double, there's other guys. And that's, I think, when your, your attack is balanced, it's, um, it's the best kind of basketball. And again, certainly you feed hot hands if they're going. Tony, um, 18 points for Jaden tonight. That's a high in conference play for him this season. Are you seeing him getting into more of a rhythm offensively? And if so, what's contributing to that? Yeah, I thought he worked hard this week. This, this was our bye week. And we did some things. Just thought he got back, you know, Played a lot of one-on-one -on -one in the post and mid-range, and um, Coach Williford did a good job with those guys and just kind of working. And I thought, you know, just sometimes when you have a bye week, you have a chance to really go to work on your own game, some skill development, so to speak, and then, of course, working on the things you need to work on. So I think that was it. And if I can add to this, since today was the coaches versus cancer, I wanted to give this guy a mention, uh, Ben Harold. He's a fourth-year student here, pre-med. It was his idea, if you see my shoes, you know, and I think they honored the, you know, the, the children, the patients who are battling cancer. They decorated all the coaches' shoes. And all of our players went, and the coaches were there, and the families were there. And we sat with them uh, maybe two months ago. I can't remember how long ago. And had them. And it was really powerful to have them come together. It was good for the families. And to see, um, to see this take off, I think our women's team did it. I think Virginia Tech did it. It's called Shoes for Hope, but what a great idea that Ben had. And I hope this thing spreads because, you know, again, it's um, whether we can get some better treatments, cures, um, seeing those young kids and their courage and their strength. Uh, and I just thought it was a neat idea. It's the first time we've ever done something like that. And so, you know, again, and we got some, I think, artists, shoe artists in the making, so I'm thankful for that. But, uh, but Ben did a good job and uh, grateful for all those young young people, those families, and, and those that are battling. Um, hopefully this will raise more awareness and we'll all do our part. Yep.